All right, so for our next task, I'm gonna work on date and time management. I'm just gonna make one short and simple function here to handle uh, dates, but I'm gonna give you some ideas on how you can improve it on your own moving forward. So in our prior data sets, the one I wanna focus on this time is the uh, Airbnb data set here. We previously had a video to make a function to do some basic wrangling where we took care of features that were like primary keys, we got rid of those or those that had too many missing values. In this data set, the idea here, the use case is typically to predict something like maybe the average reviews or how much people like the uh, each of the rooms here. And one of the fields we have is last review, the date of the last time it was reviewed. Now, there's a lot of things we can do with dates, but it requires us to do something because if we don't do anything with the date, it gets treated as a categorical value. And if we have a lot of different dates, that becomes really useless because you'll, you'll end up dummy coding all of these in your model, uh, in your modeling steps or phase later on. But what we can do with this is turn it into something like the month of the year, the year, the day of the month, the week date. We can also calculate difference between dates like days since this date. And all those become useful numeric uh, or categorical features if it's weekdays uh, that could potentially be useful in a model so that we don't have to just drop the column. So let's use this one and build a function around it uh, to make it useful. Actually, I'm going to put it down here and start my function right here. So I'm going to make a function called uh, just simply parse date. And it's going to accept a data frame and uh, let's say a list of features that we, want to, that we want to actually parse. So normally I would say let's go through and just find any features that are dates and automatically parse those. However, uh, Pandas is a little finicky at times, I guess is a good way to put it, uh, when it comes to dates depending on the format and how they get cast into dates. And it's a lot easier if we just specifically tell the function which feature that we want to actually be uh, be parsed. I'm gonna add one more parameter here called drop date. And I'm gonna default this to true. And what I mean by this is once we parse the date out of this data set, let me go ahead and print this out here. I'm gonna have to mount Google Drive real quick. Let me just make sure. I don't forget to do that. Once we uh, parse the date out, the question is, do we still want the date column in the data set? Now, when it comes time to do modeling later on, we don't want it in the data set because when we perform like a linear regression, for example, we won't be able to handle anything that's not a numeric value, including dates. So they're not numeric. So uh, here we go. Let me pull this up again. So the question is, should we just go ahead and drop it once we've created new features for things like day, date, and so forth? Oops, Airbnb, there we go. All right, so here's my data set. Uh, here's my date of last review. So typically I do wanna go ahead and drop that date. Uh, that's why I've got that in there, but I'll leave this option available because we may wanna uh, we may wanna do things. Every date situation is a bit different. For example, maybe, uh, Although I can parse out the day of the week, day of the month, weekday, year, all that type of thing, I may decide that I want to calculate the number of days since the last review. So maybe like today's current date uh, minus this date in days or something like that. And I might do that outside this function. And if I want to do that, I'm going to have to leave this in there. So I just want to give myself the option to potentially keep the data in. All right, so out of this, I want to return the data frame back with the features in there that I want. So let's go ahead and import pandas. And in case there's more than one date feature, we're gonna to need to have a loop. So for feed and features or call and columns, whatever you wanna call this, uh, let's first of all go through and make sure that it's possible to cast the feature that they've given us into a date. So to do that, I'm gonna say df feet and set that equal to pd.2 date time, and then pass in df feet. Now this could potentially give us an error. So actually let's, we'll intentionally raise an error with this so I can show you how we're gonna to wanna to handle this so that we don't uh, make things break that way. But once I've got that cast into a date, then I'm gonna go ahead and make, let's just do four new columns. So I'm gonna call these the name of the feature and then underscore, uh, let's make one for a year and then we'll do month, day and week, day. So it'll, whatever the feature name is, so it'll be last review underscore year. 
and we're going to set that equal to, and we'll do df feet dot dt dot year. And then let's just go ahead and copy this and modify it for month, day, and weekday. And then we have those properties here in the dt object for each of those. It should just give us the option for, is it going to pop up? There we go, month underscore month. No, it should just be month. I'm not sure why it's not bringing that one up properly. We'll test it out though here. All right, DT day. And then for weekday, I think it is, whoops. It's going to be day name as a method there. So these are properties. This one's a, a method. All right, let's uh, give this a try and see if this works. Oh, let's handle that drop date. So if drop date then when we're done, we're just going to go ahead and df dot drop that column that we're on. Columns equal feet. Whoops. And place equals true. All right, and let's uh, give this a shot and see how it goes here. Put that in memory. Uh, let's see, we've read this in. Let's go ahead and set that equal to um, parse date and pass in df error bnb columns equals last review and uh, when we get back let's just go ahead and print out the first five rows and see how this goes all right got an unexpected oh columns thanks first of all i've got to name my parameters the same thing that i defined it at uh, with the same name that i defined it with in my function there so let's put this one down make sure we're calling it features oh sorry i'm not Looking at the wrong thing here. Down here, columns. This needs to be features, not columns. Okay, run that again. Uh, features, let's see, df features equals. Uh, do I need to rerun this one one more time? There we go. Uh, oh, and I deleted a line somehow. Let me add that back in. Df Airbnb.head. All right, here we go. So, uh, number of reviews, last review is gone because drop date was set to true. But let's scroll out to the end so you can see what was just added. Last review, we've got the year. Okay, look, it created them as floats. Um, I really didn't want them to be floats, but it doesn't really matter. I did get the weekday here properly, so I can dummy code that later on if I want that. Uh, if you want to force these to become integers, we could go through and... Uh, year i wonder if we can do that dot as type all at once let's see if this works if not we can always cast it afterwards let's see if that works uh no cannot convert it's got some nulls in there so it doesn't like us using as type with that no that's fine uh the float's not a big deal so i've got this the question is um what happens if someone adds in or uses an incorrect value right here so, for example, let's add in one more column, like, uh, how about average review? They put in a column name that either doesn't exist or doesn't actually have a date in it. So, I'm going to put in one called doesn't exist, and then also include average review. Let's make our function uh, error-proof here, or error-resistant, by handling these situations. So, when I run these, let's see what happens. All right, I get this key error. First of all, it doesn't exist. Um, but notice it didn't give us an error on average review. That means it must have found some way to convert that to a date. So let's see what it did there. But first, let's ha handle this issue with doesn't exist. So we get that error on. Let's see which line it gives it to us right here when we try to cast it to a date. So what I'd recommend is either we check first before we run any of this that the feature name is actually in features um, or we could put a try catch around this i think i like the idea better of saying um, if feet in features sorry i'm going to say df dot columns so is the feature they gave us when they passed in the list here does it actually exist in columns so i'm going to add this as an if and proceed with all of this only if that's true and if it's not true then let's give them um, i always like to give have the ability to provide messages when cleaning is happening so i'm going to add another parameter here called messages 
set to true. And so you've seen me do this in prior videos or prior functions. So I'm going to have an if else here. So if messages, then let's let them know what happened here. Print, uh, let's tell them that feet uh, does not exist in the data frame provided. So they understand that the one, whatever they passed in, um, wasn't there. We could say like no work performed or something like that. Just so they know that it didn't do anything. Um, do we want to add any other messages for these things? Uh, we could, assuming all this went fine. We could say, uh, no, I, I think I like it without a message. If you wanted to, you could add something in here. Uh, just letting them know that it did work or something like that. Let's see if this runs. Okay, so we've still got our average review, uh, year, month, day, weekday. Um, oh, sorry, average review. Notice, yeah, it, it did this. It actually worked on average review, just like it did here on last review, where it was supposed to work. Average review wasn't actually a date column, but it made its best effort to convert it to a date. So what did it convert it to? Uh, January 1st of 1970. And I'm not sure how it even came up with that. So uh, in this case, that didn't do us a lot of good. It gave us a logical error, meaning everything ran and worked, but it wasn't what we actually wanted. Um, I was thinking it might give us an error if we tried it on something that wasn't actually formatted as a date. We could go into a lot more work to provide, to do some error checking on that. But I want to keep this video short. We're already up to 12 minutes right now. So I'm just going to say, no, let's, uh, let's not worry about the use case where they put in an actual column that does exist, but wasn't meant to be a date. We'll just scope that out of this version of it. So uh, then it got to doesn't exist, and rather than give you, giving us an error, now it just prints out a message and lets us know that, okay, this column does not exist in the data frame provided, didn't work, nothing nothing happened. All right, so let's say, though, that uh, we also want something like a days since. That's a useful calculation. So we could make that as like a parameter in here, where we say calculate um, days since a particular date, or, uh, yeah, I think that would be that would be pretty useful. So what I'm going to do is add in another option here, and I'm going to say days since equals false, and maybe I'll make it days since today equals false. So that would be another feature that it would add in if someone wanted it to. So I'm going to uh, include days since today set this to true so it overrides this one and it's gonna and let's set up the logic to add a column that takes the current date and just calculates a days since that date why would that be useful in this context it would be something like uh, well if the average review if it's been a longer time since the la no, sorry not average review last review if it's been a longer time since the last review then that means maybe that's that property is not getting used as much and maybe that would explain some of the lower ratings or something like that who knows it may not be useful but there might be some context where it is so what i'm going to do is here in the for loop if feet in columns before i drop it that's when i'm going to have to actually calculate it so maybe i'll leave all of this here and then let's just put in the logic right here to calculate days since today so if days since today, um, let's go ahead and create that as a date. So to do that, I'm going to first make a variable called today, set that equal, oh, let's see, I'm gonna to need to import right here, import uh, date time, or from date time, import uh, date time as dt, so there's a date time dot date time. And then I want to call DT, oops, oh, didn't mean to do that. DT dot today. Let me just print this out so you can see what uh, this looks like. All right, here's the here's what today is, what it, how it prints it out. Uh, it includes the time, that's okay, we don't need the time, we just need this date right here. So uh, if days since today, we've got today's date now. So instead of printing it, I'm just going to make a column 
called, uh, let's put in the feature name, underscore maybe like days until today or something like that. And then uh, let's set that equal to today minus DF feet. So, oops, today minus the date column. And we want that difference expressed in days, hence the uh, dot dt dot days right here, which is what we imported that for. Uh, so actually, technically, I think I can save us a line. Let's just copy this and put it right there so we can eliminate that one. And actually, why don't we just put it all in one line now? So we've got both of our ifs right there. Okay, run that. And now, uh, let's see, I still have my doesn't exist in there, so that's why that's coming up. Scroll to the end. Here we go. So we've got our last review parsed out into year, month, day, and weekday. And then we've also got this last review days until today. So right now, today's February uh, of 2024. Um, so yeah, that's about right. So four years since then, maybe not quite four years, three, no, almost five years actually. So that, that's about right. Yeah, 365 till almost, times almost five, four and a half or something. So that looks correct. That's the number of days till today. Uh, useful. Now, here's how I would modify this, this function in the future. I set it to work for dates that come in a particular format. In particular, a format that could be cast using the pandas dot two date time function. It was able to be cast into a date. Sometimes dates come in all kinds of crazy formats. The way I would modify this function moving forward is to recognize the format or specify the format as a parameter and then have it properly cast it into a date time for a variety of different formats. So if you currently have a data set with a date in a different format, you're probably going to run into this where you'll have to cast it into a different type and you'll see what I mean. And you can just keep expanding this function to detect the format and then you'll be modifying this line with maybe an if else, if elif block to cast it properly, but then everything else should work the same way. All right, hopefully this was useful.